Hello everybody and welcome back to another Monster Hunter World video. I'm Lutherian and today we are going to go over Kirin, one of the Elder Dragons in Monster Hunter World. Kirin can be one of the first Elder Dragons you face in Monster Hunter World or it can be one of the last depending on how often you do the side quests. But no matter at what point in the game you actually encounter Kirin, you will always face down this Elder Dragon in the Coral Highlands. This area is actually my favorite area in the game. It's one of the more unique areas we've seen in a Monster Hunter title, and there's plenty of gorgeous views and it has environmental interactions that I quite like. There. It's also home to two of my favorite fights in the game, Legiana and Kirin. Kirin is one of those monsters that has been around since the beginning of the franchise. It's strange to call it an Elder Dragon since it's more of a horse lion than anything else, but it is considered an Elder Dragon. And while Kirin may not be as physically intimidating as other Elder Dragons, it is one of the more powerful creatures in the game. What's so tough about a unicorn lion, you might ask? Well, we'll get to that in a minute, but first, let's look at the environment that we'll be hunting this monster in. Remember, there's more to the fight than just the monster. First, let's go over Area 10. This is probably the most vertical area on the map, and it's where you really don't want to fight Kirin. There's a flash bug here, but it does not affect Kirin. I'll demonstrate that later in the video. One thing you'll really want to watch for in this area is that many of Kirin's attacks will hit you if you are above her. There really isn't much more to this area other than using the verticality to mount Kirin. Next we'll go through Area 8. This is a big open battleground where you'll often fight Kirin. The open space is nice because it will allow you enough room to dodge Kirin's many AoE abilities. There are two Vigor Wasps floating around here, and a Wedge Beetle to help you traverse up to Area 12 or Mount Monsters. In Area 12 you'll notice the landscape is sloped. If you're heading downward you can easily slide, allowing for the use of some powerful attacks with certain weapons. This is another one of the areas where you'll fight Kirin often, which is nice because the sliding attacks will allow most weapons to mount the monster for a stun and a good window for damage. Especially important for bow users, up top there's a Wiggly Lichy. This gives a buff, which reduces stamina consumption. If we continue going up from there, we come to Area 13, another area where you probably don't want to fight Kirin, as it's very small and cramped. There are a lot of environmental hazards in this area, such as poison cups, paratoads, and sleep toads, but as Kirin moves often, you will most likely not get a chance to use these. There are, however, several wedge beetles you could use to quickly swing yourself around and traverse up to Area 15 at the top of the mountain. There is also a Wiggly Lichy here, if you want to grab this while chasing Kirin up the mountain. As we keep going up, we finally reach the top of the mountain in Area 15. This is the third major area where you fight Kirin. It's a flat open space, but not much else. There is a contextual jump spot where you can press circle and jump down to Area 12 relatively quickly. You can use this to chase down Kirin if it runs from you. Lastly, Kirin does travel into Area 2. This does not occur often, but it does happen. There are several ledges you can use to perform jumping attacks in an attempt to mount the monster, but other than that, there isn't much else special in this particular area. Alright, I believe that pretty much covers the Coral Highlands, let's move on to prepping for the hunt. This is my Kirin hunting set. As you can see, I have three Thunder Resist Jewels and three Vitality Jewels. In my opinion, this fight, especially the Timbered variant, is all about survival, which means having good defensive stats. You can use offensive skills all you want, but if Kirin hits you with a thunder attack while enraged, it may one-shot you without high enough resistances and health. As you can see here, my particular set has 36 thunder resist, which is really nice, but this may be a little bit overkill for some other hunters. 
I also highly recommend eating elemental resist large food, as this will provide further elemental resistance. It actually adds 15. So my set goes from 36 to 51, which I believe is enough to prevent even a tempered Kirin from one-shotting me with some of its enraged attacks. Next, let's look to see what the Hunter's Notes have to say about Kirin. Kirin are so rarely sighted that little is known of their ecology. It's been said that they envelop themselves in pure electricity when they are provoked. The lightning a Kirin cloaks itself with has been confirmed to toughen its skin. The key to hunting a Kirin lies in staggering it, using Elder Seal weapons, and protecting yourself from and avoiding its lightning attacks. Next up are Kirin's weaknesses. You can see that she is weak to 3 stars fire damage, 2 stars water and ice, 1 star dragon, and a red X for thunder. For ailments, we have 2 star sleep and blast, 1 star poison and stun, and a red X for paralysis. Kirin's horn is breakable, and as you can see by the loot here, if you do break its horn, you have a higher chance of getting a Kirin thunder horn in low rank rewards. And of course, in the high rank rewards, you also have a higher chance of getting the Kirin Azure Horn if you break Kirin's horn. You might also notice from the loot tables here that Kirin does not have a gem drop. It is the only Elder Dragon in the game that does not have its own gem. Now I think it's time to look at the monster itself. This is Kirin. It looks like a horse. A very dangerous horse. A horse that also likes to eat grass. Kirin is one of the few monsters in the world that is not actively hostile when you encounter it. It will continue on about its business until provoked. The main inspiration for Kirin comes from Chinese mythology. In China, a Kirin is a hooved chimerical creature that is often depicted with fire surrounding its body. They are said to have horned dragon-like heads with horse-like bodies. When these creatures were adopted into Japanese mythology, they were often depicted as unicorns, which is how we ended up with Kirin as it appears in Monster Hunter. This also may be the reasoning behind why it is considered an Elder Dragon. Kirin has a lot of different attacks. To simplify this, I will put them into two categories, elemental and physical. Let's start with the elemental attacks first. Kirin does a high amount of elemental damage in the form of lightning attacks. A common attack this monster uses is its Thunderbolt attack. Kirin can call multiple strikes down in quick succession and at a large range. There will be a small flash on the ground to alert you where these will strike. Kirin can also throw down a single large blast of lightning, dealing massive damage. When enraged, this is Kirin's most powerful move. Kirin also has several AoE-type attacks. The first is a close-range thunder attack that covers its body, and the second one is a medium range that strikes out in a star-like pattern. These moves often follow each other, so be careful in melee range. Kirin also has a horizontal lightning strike attack. This moves at a long range and can sometimes ignore elevation, so watch out for that. On top of these base attacks, Kirin can also enrage, covering itself in static armor and increasing its attack power. This added armor will cause many attacks to the body to bounce off or be ineffective, though the head still takes normal damage. This enrage effect will increase the damage and speed of many of Kirin's attacks. This is where most hunters fall, especially on the tempered variant. The Thunderbolt attack can now strike up to six times, and the area of the Thunder Blast is much larger. Kirin's close and medium range AoE abilities will now have twice as many Thunderbolts in this enraged mode. Kirin will also triple up on its horizontal lightning strike. If you're in poor positioning, such as being trapped in a corner, this could easily kill you if not at full health. Kirin does gain one additional move while enraged, it's a single bolt followed by multiple strikes. Let's move on to the physical attacks. Kirin has a charge and a gallop that are very similar. If you're hit by these, it will deal minor damage and knock you down. Kirin also has a horn attack where it will run up and smack you with its horn, knocking you down. And also a hind kick attack. Kirin's enrage also affects its physical attacks. One thing I didn't mention before was that when Kirin is enraged, the hair on the mane will stand up. If you lose sight of the monster, use this to determine if it is enraged or not. While enraged, the gallop and charge attacks will leave lightning bolt trails behind. And the horn attack will be followed by a thunderbolt attack. And lastly, the hind kick is relatively the same. With a lot of verticality in the areas you fight Kirin in, there will be many opportunities to mount the monster. 
Kieran will often buck or charge into a wall in an attempt to throw you off. If you do manage to mount Kieran while it's enraged, this will open up a window for easy damage to stagger it and revert it back to its normal form. Sadly, Kieran is immune to flash pods and flash bombs, so don't bother trying to use these on it. Next, I want to show you the fastest way to get up to Area 15 from Area 12 without the glider mantle. You only need to use a few of the wedge beetles, but you can get up there relatively quickly with just these few. Normally, if you see Kieran go to Area 13, you'll want to go ahead and bypass this and head up to Area 15 and wait for her there. As Area 13 is probably one of the worst spots to actually fight this monster. Kieran doesn't have a nest, but it does rest in Area 15. You can head up here after it falls asleep to place barrel bombs for free damage. As a reminder, blast damage does break monster parts, so you can use this time to place down several bombs to break Kieran's horn. If you're cautious and stay on top of your healing, you'll kill Kieran in no time. Remember, Kieran is a low health, high damage monster, so you don't need to bring a max DPS set of gear. The important thing about this fight is survival. You'll easily outlast Kieran if you gear and prepare properly. One last thing to wrap up the video, Kieran is the only Elder Dragon that you can encounter with the Tail Rider Safari. You can use this to get a few extra materials if you plan on crafting the Kieran gear. Thank you guys for watching, I hope everyone learned something new. If you're interested in seeing a video like this for another monster, let me know in the comments down below. Good luck and happy hunting.